This is all on the radio, Bangalore. On the occasion of the United Nations Day, we now bring you a recording of the talk by the late Sardar K. M. Panika on the efforts of the United Nations towards the prevention of a world conflict. The achievements of the United Nations and its specialized agencies in many fields affecting the life of mankind, such as food, health, culture, and economic and social activities are well known and highly appreciated. The activities of the WHO, the FAO, the UNESCO and other branches of the world organization have entered deep into the lives of the nations, especially of the newly liberated peoples struggling against poverty, disease, ignorance and hunger. But the activities of the main body, the UN itself, are not so well known. So far, people have generally tended to identify it with the Cold War, the bitter political fight between America and her allies on the one hand and the Soviets and her friends on the other. With the ever-increasing number of Afro-Asian nations, powerless in themselves, working together to hold an uneasy balance between the two groups, the picture that the common man has of the United Nations when it is not as a forum for the continuing fight against colonialism and racial discrimination, is as a stage where the great powers of the world, ranged in two camps, carry on a warfare of words. This is but a partial and superficial view. The contribution of UN to the maintenance of peace has been very significant. While it is true that where the conflict of interests has been between major powers as in Korea, Vietnam and Berlin. The safeguarding of peace was mainly by negotiations outside the United Nations. But it is not open to doubt that it is the presence of organized world opinion in the United Nations that prevented these conflicts from exploding into a great war. The active efforts of the United Nations for the, main attain for the containment of hostilities, which in every case might have grown into wider conflicts, began with her intervention in the police action that the Dutch organized against the Indonesian Republic. Though the organization was in its infancy and had not developed the prestige which it later came to possess, it was able to contain the trouble and by patient diplomacy to bring the parties together in order to reach an agreement. Two other instances where the UN was able to intervene, enforce a ceasefire and ensure that it was being observed effectively were in Kashmir and in Palestine. There was, an op there was open and bitter fighting in Kashmir when the matter was taken to the Security Council. Whatever we may say about the vacillations of that body, its inability to take objective decisions, its sensitiveness to political pressure, we have to recognize the simple fact that the UN has been able to ensure that active fighting does not take place in the area. The Palestine issue was no less explosive. The Arab-Israel war could easily have become more than a local conflict. Again, it is to the credit of UN that it was able to enforce a ceasefire and to maintain an uneasy truce along the borders. No less significant have been the two recent successes of UN in averting local wars which might have developed into wider conflicts. In Congo, a major civil war threatened the unity and independence of the new state. The other instance is in respect of Irian, New Guinea, where the Dutch administration of the island had come into what may be called an unofficial conflict with Indonesia. Though it was the United States that brought the parties together, it is to the credit of the UN that the transition from colo Dutch colonial administration to Indonesian government was carried out without any conflict. These, it may be said, are instances where no great power was directly concerned and therefore it cannot in any way be said that the UN had been effective in its efforts to prevent the world war. But it should be remembered that world wars always start as local conflicts. It was Austria's action against Serbia 
that lit the flame of the first conflagration. It was German action against Poland that developed into the Second Great World War. So it can well be claimed that wherever the conflicts between nations, however small in the beginning, are brought under control and peace is restored by negotiations, the danger of greater conflicts developing is being averted. The success of the UN has been mainly in this direction. Actually, where major powers were involved, the UN always found their efforts stultified. The outstanding example was in respect of Suez. Though open aggression against a weak nation had been committed by two major powers acting in concert, the UN found itself helpless and the pre prevention of a world conflict had to be left to the United States and the Soviet Union. In the same way, when the bitter colonial war in Indochina, which after the French debacle threatened to become a major conflict as a result of Mr. Dulles's brinkmanship, the UN itself was left helpless, and peace was saved not by collective action of the Security Council, but by negotiations between the powers. Can it then be said, that where the great powers are concerned, the UN is unable to help in the maintenance of peace. The right of veto enjoyed by the five permanent members of the Security Council, which is the body entrusted with the duty of upholding peace, would seem to prevent the UN from taking any effective action against any of the great powers, even in the case of open aggression. And yet the fact remains that no state, unless its own vital interests are directly threatened, would with easy conscience defy the overwhelming opinion of a world body like the United Nations. True, neither Britain nor France in their aggression against Egypt, nor the Soviet Union in its action against Hungary, was stopped by fear of the opinion of the United Nations. Nor was the Security Council or the General Assembly in a position to intervene at the time of the Berlin blockade. Yet, who can deny that by providing a forum for openly discussing differences and quarrels, by creating an effective moral opinion about major issues which might develop into conflicts, by containing the little wars which have a tendency to enlarge themselves, the UN has not contributed in a great measure to the maintenance of world peace. Its effort towards the prevention of world conflict have not always been spectacular. Indeed, they could hardly have been so. But wherever a crisis threatened to develop, whether it be in respect of Berlin, Cuba or Malaysia, its unpublicized presence has been of great value and its mediatory efforts have been welcomed. The prestige of UN stands high today. Its achievement in bringing about the unity of Congo with the, with the use of a minimum of force and its ass assistance in the peaceful transfer of Uriya to Indonesia have greatly increased its authority in the world. Today it is in a stronger position than ever to continue successfully its effort to prevent a world conflict. That was a recording of the talk by the late Sardar K. Panika on the efforts of the United Nations towards the prevention of a world conflict. This program came to you from All India Radio, Bangalore.